Hey, welcome back. Today, it's more X-Men as we go into House of X number four. It's part two of uh, the cliffhanger that came out last week. If you haven't seen last week's video, uh, go ahead and check that thing out. Um, and hey, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, uh, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. All those things that you do on these videos really support us and help us move up through the ranks of YouTube. Uh, we broke the 300 subscriber mark recently. Uh, not too many people watch that video, but the right people did. So uh, stick around soon and we'll be uh, making sure that there's a little bit of extra something something for those viewers who are paying attention. Hey, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about how House of X, not number three, but number four, part two of the one that we reviewed last week. We'll also get into uh, a little bit more uh, Krakoan alphabet stuff. You know, to start off, one thing that I forgot to mention about Krakoan was to define the word autochthonous. Uh, Hickman drops this word on us. Krakoan was created by Douglas Ramsey to be mutantum's first autochthonous language. It's important to note that Krakoan is a manufactured language and not the native language of Krakoa, the living mutant island. Now, if you don't know the definition of autochthonous, and shame on you if you don't. Uh, it means that it's a language that comes from not a people, but a place. Kind of an interesting term I'd never heard before. And uh, you know, when you get new vocabulary words in your comics, you know you're reading something uh, fun and interesting, right? So let's go right into the Million Dollar Comics cam. Last week, this week. So at the end of last week's House of X number three, we had a cliffhanger ending. Uh, spoiler alert, they were on the space station uh one of the orcus scientists decided to uh it was worth saving humanity to sacrifice himself so he blew up the section of the space station that he was in uh taking a big portion of the x plane with us now you go this and you go all right the x-men it's got wolverine and marvel girl and nightcrawler on board An archangel a few others the, it's probably okay right like there's the front of this plane is looking all right so, you know, maybe they're all up there. They got Marvel Girl, Telekinesis. Should be okay, right? Well, let's find out. Um, when we jump in, we find out really, no, things are, are, are not that great. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the extra little um, text sections after I go through a, a quick plot synopsis here. I got some stuff to say about these, um, about these text sections. So um, anyway, we, we, we get a, a, a cry from help for, from Marvel go to the professor and, you know, explains them the situation that they're at. Man, it's pretty bad. Like Archangel's dead. All right. Um, uh, I, I, as well as Husk, Nightcrawler has some kind of injury and, and Logan is like seriously effed up. You can see like through his arm, but obviously he'll be okay. Um, Magneto, Professor X... Still working together, coordinating um, to uh, uh, make sure that the mission happens, right? Like, this is too important. They're, the X-Men are on this mission to, to space in order to um, stop the uh, rise of the Mother Mold, right? And because the Mother Mold that, that they are bringing online, that Orcus is bringing online... Um, is the precursor it's the prelude to the rise of nimrod um and we can see the, the 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 last like precursor to that is supposed to be the omega sentinels and we see here karima who we talked about in the last issue and we get to see her do um quite a bit more in this one um so anyway the x-men this is actually pretty cool it's like an action-based issue and uh cyclops is like uh, let's send out the team and he coordinates who's going to go to each one of these four kind of like control structures that are holding together the mother mold and let's let's drop it into the sun um, so we get to see lots of nice moments uh, self-sacrifice we get to see um, a character Monet not someone I was really familiar with I had to research her a little bit too sort of from that era of X-Men that was not exactly my cup of tea um, but we see uh, a, a lot happening here, including the apparent um, death of Mystique. 
And as we go on, we start to see that uh, there are really high stakes going on in here. Um, as you know, they've basically figured out the only way to complete their mission at this point is suicide. And um, you know, uh, they uh, check back in with Professor X to say, basically, you know, we don't know what to do. We're in a no-win situation. What should we do? And Professor X's answer is, do. Do whatever it takes. And Marvel Girl wants to make sure that uh, Cyclops heard that. So did you hear him, Scott? And, and so like that's official. You guys got to do what it takes. This is our only chance at this. Wolverine knows this, and he and, and Nightcrawler basically uh, sacrifice themselves. Wolverine plunges into the sun after the Mother Mold. Uh, and and um, I think Nightcrawler dies at that moment too. Maybe he could have poured it away. Um, and then finally we get to see Cyclops as he gets caught uh, by Karima, right? We get to see her using her Sentinel power. She can transform herself. She says that she shot nano sent nanites into Cyclops, which are at the base of his spine, inhibiting his brain from his using his mutant power. So he's pretty much helpless. And along comes the scientist. Cyclops like, look, man, capturing me, what's that? That's not going to do anything. It's not going to help to capture me. And the scientist is like, dude, I'm not here to capture you. You killed my husband. It's go time. And she's got a gun and basically blows Cyclops' head off. Um, so this is where, you know, Wolverine is now dead. Cyclops is dead. This is where Professor X breaks down. And, and I, I will concede that point at this point that this is Professor X. I don't think it's Doug Ramsey anymore. I think it's Professor X with like a Cerebro helmet. And and he breaks down and he's like, no more. This can't happen again. And this is where um, this is where we have to realize that this cannot be the 616 timeline, right? It just doesn't make sense at this at this point for it to be that. Um, so let's uh uh, let, let's look at at the timeline again one more time, right? Let's uh, see what's going on here. And so if we are presumably in this 10th timeline, and, and let's say that this is the Marvel Universe that we have known and loved for all this time, that means that somewhere in the past, all these nine lives went through. We're in the 10th life. Before the X-Men happened, assuming, you know, Fantastic Four, all kinds of stuff happening, right, in the Marvel Universe back there. All the stuff that intertwines with the X-Men history throughout this 10th timeline, right? Can we even zoom in more? Let's do that. Year 25, Moira marries Joseph McTaggart, founds the Re Muir in Research Institute, uh, wins the Nobel Prize, gives birth to Proteus at 31. This seems like the Marvel Universe we know. Okay? So Moira, Moira and Xavier recruit Magneto. Year 43. That's when, is that when Magneto was the um, leader of the X-Men for a pretty long run? It seems like four years, four years later, Moira, Xavier, Magneto, schism. Then the genocide at Genosha, Genosha. Somebody gave me grief in the comments for how I'm pronoun pronouncing it. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm not sure. Um, and Moira's fake death. This is sort of where in the comics it seemed like Moira was already dead. And I've heard this is a retcon that like Moira kind of was already dead in our universe, but they've decided that it, she faked her death to keep her alive now. So that makes us here, Year Fifty Two, House of X. This is where House of X began. Okay. Now I'm having a little bit of uh, uh, of trouble reconciling that. So what we saw previously in Powers of X was Magneto and Xavier joining early at year one of the X-Men to create this mutant offshoot um, nation on, on Krakoa. And for them to work together but to stay separate from humanity, but to work with humanity. This is a subtle difference in the way they've always worked, right? So obviously that can't have happened in our timeline. So where was that happening? Um, was that happening in, 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 in one of these 
previous timelines? I, I went through it and I couldn't I couldn't pin it down. Could this be what happened in the sixth timeline? The missing sixth timeline? The other theory here for the sixth timeline is could that be the 616 universe that we know? And that everything that's happened after that um, ha just sort of been happening for the course of the series? I don't think so. I think where we're at is that your the 10th the life has to be the current timeline because it fits in perfectly with the events that we know from our X-Men's history, right? 616 continuity, if you will. Um, but the question is where we go from here because now we're here and we just lost Cyclops and we lost uh, Wolverine and we lost uh, too many, right? And, and uh, Xavier says no more. So clearly... We're setting the stage here for um, a reboot of X-Men continuity with the death of Moira. Um, now, will she be killed? Or possibly, right? She could be killed. We reboot into the 11th timeline, and then whatever happens, happens. The other possibility is, um, as I've speculated before, Moira could um, become stripped of her powers and die somehow. And it didn't really occur to me, you know, I thought like, you know, Rogue could steal her powers or something. Who knows what happens? There's other mutants that can like negate powers or whatever. And then you kill her and it's done. Um, but what didn't occur to me and what uh, longtime watcher and frequent commenter JK mentioned in a, a, a previous video is what Mo Moira does know the cure for mutants. She cured it in one of her previous timelines. She could potentially use that cure on herself to stay alive, but uh, prevent new timelines from being triggered and making this the, the, the final timeline. But would that, in turn, just the fact that she um, created the cure, even if she's just using it on herself, the quote-unquote cure for mutants, um, if she used it on herself, would that be enough to trigger destiny and the brotherhood of mutants to come and kill her for the final time i like to think so that could be a fun kind of gruesome end to the moira saga and would leave us in a final timeline now whether that happens in this timeline i'm, I'm gonna just frankly doubt it because at this point you're not nobody's nobody thinks cyclops and wolverine and archangel and nightcrawler are dead okay so that begs the question here if we reboot into the next one and um, that is uh, Professor X and Magneto working from the very beginning of the X-Men to create the s separate society. If that's the plan, how does that mesh with the X-Men continuity we know? And um, how does that play into what may or may not have happened um, you know, in the continuity throughout the Marvel Universe, right? Because it's not just the X-Men. This is the Marvel Universe. It's deeply intertwined. Um, I mean, wh wh how does N Submariner, Namor, factor into this as well? Isn't he the first mutant from the Marvel Universe? I don't know. Let's hear what you have to think. I want to hear about it in um, the comments, guys. There's been some lot of great theories being floated in the comments. Some of which are wrong, but man, a lot of mine are wrong too. So... Isn't it great to have a book that we can all be excited about and talking about? And now, now while I really usually don't love weekly series, um, which essentially this comic is, right? It's two series that are coming out in in a weird order, which is kind of neat, but a little confusing for the casual fan, right? You got to be on top of it and getting in there every week. Usually those weekly series are very forgettable things by forgettable creators that don't have much to do with continuity at all. I think doing it in the way that they did allows them to tell a longer story in a compressed amount of time that has a lot of meat to it, a lot of substance, is going to reboot X-Men continuity, if you will, but not by throwing away all those other events, right? Not by just writing them away with the stroke of a pen, if you will. What they're doing is they're doing it the right way. They're 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 creating a plot device that allows them to streamline their continuity. So if this means that now the Marvel history of the mutants and the Marvel in general has changed in ways that we don't know, is that the biggest deal? Isn't 
that almost how it always works anyway, right? When a good when, when comics are going, and they come up with new ideas and new writers come in and those ideas get retconned or change subtly a direction that the uh, um, original creator of a character might have thought a character was going to go in that character might go in a completely different direction in the hands of another writer, editor, artist, team, etc. Um, that's kind of the fun of comics. And what's great about this is this is getting people in the stores talking about comics, watching videos about comics, right? Because this X-Men stuff has been a humongous hit for me. These are some of my most popular videos ever. People really like the timeline content. It's helping this channel grow. And hey, Speaking of keeping this channel growing, thank you so much for supporting us. Thanks for watching and doing all that stuff that you do to keep things going. So please keep watching. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. One more feature. Back to the Million Dollar Comics Cam and over to the Krakoan Alphabet because, well, we've got, um, I forgot, the, the, the backup pages right there's a lot of extra content in here and I, and, and I forgot that I want to first um, complain about something but first I'm gonna I'll, I'll do the translations right so we've got the the page and we got the code and last time we learned the Krakoan alphabet um, this one we saw from the previous one right already you can know that this is N I, I'm you know that's N E X T and this is something sinister so we knew from the previous one that it said the then the one, the, the one after this would be something sinister. So we've seen this one already. And that this one is new. And it says, then, society. And this is, one is for House of X number five. This one is for Powers of X number four, where presumably we'll see Mr. Sinister. House of X number five, um, society. Which I think is going to show, you know, what Charles must have, lear be, have learned from this timeline um, he's going to make sure it never happens again. And they're going to set up a, a, a new setup for the X-Men and their, their place in society. So if we look at these extra bonus pages here, Charles basically decides no more. And then we go into this. Now, what are we seeing here? Bunch of stuff. Wow, wow, Hickman, they're really throwing in all kinds of extra pages and content, right? Well, no. This stuff is, all this is, is the content from the beginning of the book that we already read this is a gr this is a great piece there's a lot of really interesting stuff here about all the different mutant genocides right that have happened and all the people that have you know committed crimes human humans who've committed major crimes against mutants um all that stuff here is just refit with with artwork from this and other issues, remixed a little bit, a couple fake headlines thrown in, but really no extra content for one. No, come on. This is a page. No more. This is the title of the book. We already spent an entire page here that says the title page, right, is no more. No more. No more. No more. Okay, I say no more filler, right? No more. I, I counted the comics pages in here. There are 20, uh, 22 pages. If you count this as a page, and I do because it has a lot of content and is is, is informative and, and important to the book that we're reading. Um, but come on. This is a, a bit of a grab. So we're... A normal comic, I think, should be, what, 24 pages? So this is really about 22, and then a lot of filler. I don't mind when the filler has content, and you can read it, spends time. Hickman stated in an interview that he really wanted to add these extra text pieces. So there's more than 24 pages here, right? You get, like, 26, 27, but of comics, you really only get, like, 21 or 20 pages. So work-wise, a little less, but it feels like a heftier buy in your hand, Right? This one even has the special see-through logo. This is a, a the really rare variant cover that it's completely transparent. Um, it, you know, so it's a it, it's ex, it's expensive um, to buy this series four ninety nine a book, but but it feels good in the hand. It's got a good feel. This has extra filler stuff in the middle 
too, talking about the Dawn of X, what comes next. So I feel like Dawn of X is where we're headed, right? We're going to see the end of the 10th timeline. It's going to be more as 11th timeline. Somehow it's going to get nipped in the bud at some point. Um, but what's exciting about this non, uh, about the new start and about um, Dawn of X and particularly X-Men number one. So I read this interview um, in this free Marvel Universe magazine, right? And uh, it had an interview with Hickman where he said some really pretty exciting stuff. He says, well, um, the X-Men book is not about the Summer's Clan. It's just one issue. Each issue of X-Men is planned to be a one and done and each issue will have a new cast with some overlap from issue to issue. This leads to that, and that means characters A and B need to be replaced with G and H. In fact, in that oversized first issue, the big action stuff is Cyclops, Magneto, Polaris, and Storm. Then all Summer's clan stuff gets rolling. Anyway, it'll be fun. That's all anyone needs to worry about. I, this is music to my ears. And then the interviewer asks, single issue adventures have been sprinkled in throughout the X-Men history. But other than the Silver Age, they are certainly the exception rather than the rule. But you've chosen to take this approach. Why did you choose this format? And Hickman says, I just want the book to have a certain velocity. I've certainly been guilty of it myself, but I think there's a little too much meandering in comics right now. Boom. That is Hickman's mic drop on the age of decompressed storytelling. We've spent a lot of time a decade or two now writing comics for the trade right but when you're writing them in chapters that are set lengths like comics are it leads to a, a, a stagnant rhythm to a work in my opinion in this modern age where we have original graphic novels if you want a longer work write it as a single OGN where you can pace the story accordingly it doesn't have to be fit into these boxes for uh, modern comics, if we want to save this industry, if you want people excited about comics and coming into the shops every week to get comics, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't care about that, but I do. I've come around on this. There's different kinds of comics fans. The kind of comic fan I am is one that likes to go to the comic book store on Wednesday and get the new comics because I'm excited because I care about seeing that stuff first before anybody else, right? Because I want to read it and I care about not just the medium, but like the culture of the shops and the stores and the stuff that I grew up with, right? I grew up in a comic book store, almost literally, and I am watching them slowly disappear. And, you know, morphing and changing is one thing, but retail in general is starting to shift and disappear as we move into this Amazon computerized age. And that's a really good thing for some things, but for comics and the culture of comic books and readers and your community, the local culture as well as the wider internet cultures have to support each other. So what does this mean? This means get your butt into a comic book store. If you've got one, right? If you've got a local one, go in there and support them. Buy books on Wednesday. Get a subscription and put X-Men on that list and let's start reading, thinking about, talking about comics again. And now I'm really finished. So if you stuck around this long, thanks ever so much. I'm super excited. There's a lot of change in the air over here in my life and in comic book news and everything else. So keep watching for exciting new announcements soon. And uh, thanks again. We will see you next time.